Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Ravnica Mythic Editions. Um, on top we see Guilds of Ravnica with 9 hours left, $530. This costs $249.99 to buy. And you were given a free top loader from Ultimate Masters worth, I would imagine, on average, $75, especially given the fact that it came out early. So maybe $100. So if you invested $250, you would have double your money, more than double your money with shipping and got a free box topper of Ultimate Masters. So clearly it was a fantastic buy. It was the best buy of the year, very easy money. As I've documented before, certain YouTubers had their subscribers buy for them because there was a limit of two. Uh, therefore, they were able to buy a few thousand copies, I imagine, or as many as they wanted for charity, of course. Charity. So this was an easy flip. Um, the easiest money that you could ever make in Magic the Gathering was buying this product and or having your relatives. So the product was a little unique at this point in time. You could buy them from Magic Fest. There is a certain MTG finance person that took his grandmother, his niece his uncles i mean he took it like his whole family his like fake fam he paid homeless people to go buy this stuff for him because you could actually buy it in the magic fest which was run by channel fireball for 250 and then you can flip it on ebay for 600 700 bucks no problem no problem at all so Oh, in this case, their standard uh, shipping is not even included. So <laughs> could, you know, shipping costs additional uh, in this case. So you don't, you don't have to worry about shipping. So essentially, uh, these things are selling uh, very, very fast. Um, They're doing very well. Now, the question is, oh, this is selling from China. That's interesting. I didn't know they had the Guild of Ravnica edition. I assume Ravnica Legion is probably a little different, but Guild of Ravnica Edition probably would be harder to get um, your hands on, I assume, you know, for a foreign country. I didn't know that they showed it, sold it in foreign countries. But anyway, my point is very simple. It, it's quite interesting because you have a situation where it's the easiest money anyone's ever made. Uh, it's so obvious you double or triple your money instantaneously and there's no real limitation. You're supposed to be limit to a person or to a household, but if you have a YouTube channel, if you have family friends, if you have you know, high school friends, I mean, if you have friends in general or coworkers, it's not an issue. You can just do what the mana source and others have done and you know, not, it's, he's not the only one. He's not the only one. You double your money right there. You have no issues doubling your money. Even after eBay fees and things of that nature, you will be fine. Now the question is, now the question is, Ravnica Allegiance, how is that going to do? Because maybe you missed the opportunity with Ravnica, uh, Guild of Ravnica, the first one version of this. Ravnica Allegiance, the Planeswalker is, in my opinion, are not as good and it's still on sale you can still buy from the hasbro website so all these like websites that are charging 110 more dollars doesn't really make too much sense for me because a you get you get it slower than the original hasbro uh here around the cut legions uh mythic edition is 700 bucks um, that's the new one that you can buy on their website for $250. So theoretically, you could buy three of these boxes for the same price. Why would you not do this, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense that you would want to buy from an eBay vendor for triple the price. But people are doing this. I I'm not sure if they're international or what the issue is. But you can flip it for quite a bit of money. Now, the question is, should you flip it? Um, is this a good concept? And I think for me, given where I'm currently with in the game, I don't like this type of price point. And I don't like the price point because it rewards wealthier individuals. So if you don't have $250 to buy this to an initial investment, 
then on Hasbro's website, the shipping is free. Then you're kind of out in the dark, right? You're kind of out. And that's not a good thing to feel, in my opinion. That's very bad for the game. Because let, let me say this, if you want, if I told you there was a $500 investment that you can flip for $1,000 easy, no problem, in two months, you would say, yeah, I'll take it. But what if you didn't have $500? What if $500 is what you need to pay for rent or food or expenses? Then you don't have the capital. This is how the rich get richer because these opportunities only exist for the rich. This is the perfect example of something where um, it will segment the community because um, what's happening is the people buying this are not interested in enjoying magic. So like that MTG finance person that took his uncle, his cousin, he doesn't even play magic. He doesn't even play magic. He's openly only MTG finance. Uh, you know who I'm, who I'm talking about because he brags about it all the time, right? He's like, oh, I bought a hundred of these things and I made so much money and you know, I. It, it's a sad state of the game, and I won't support it. I'm not going to support it, but I can tell you if you want to buy it right now, you can buy from. I tried to buy it from Wizard of the Coast right now, and it works. You can buy as many as you want. Just use different addresses, different eBay accounts, you'll be fine. Uh, this type of stuff is, in my opinion, going to eventually destroy the game. It is. Just like in our society, the rich get richer because they can put their money into investments, stocks or bonds or whatever they're investing in. The poorer people do not have this capital because they're living paycheck to paycheck. Therefore, they cannot. If I told them, hey, Apple is going to be a hot stock, they can't invest. They won't invest in Apple because they don't have any money to do that. Now, if you are really wealthy, you can put a hundred million to Apple, and hey, Apple doubled, and now your hundred is two hundred, and you can put it into Tesla or something else, whatever else is popular at the time. In my opinion, this type of stuff will eventually fail. Um, they, there's many reasons it's going to fail. The number one reason is it kills game stores. So, if most people buy a booster box or two or three at this price point. They're not going to buy a booster box from your store if they can get a guaranteed eight mythic planeswalkers, right? No store can guarantee this item because no store gets the item. Therefore, a lot of people are just going to buy their boxes directly from Hasbro from now on. Then if I were a store, like my friend's store, DNA Comics, I would rationalize that, hmm, my f &M support is down, but yet I have to provide a place for these people to play. I have to provide an employee for them, so, you know, you know, to manage, to put it in the system. I have to provide electricity. I have to provide, an, obviously, heating. Hmm. I have to provide internet for them, a TV show. I have to be open during these hours, which are not normal hours for me to want to be open. The same with pre-release, and then all the money goes back into a prize pool anyway. So how much money am I really making from this venture of FNM and pre-release? And they will probably conclude no money. And then they're going to conclude, okay, how much money can I make selling singles? And the answer is not no money because you have to hire someone who's good at buying and selling, and that takes more per hour. And then they're going to ask, okay, how many boxes can I buy? And the answer, how many boxes can I sell? And the answer is no boxes. Because you're competing not against Amazon, not against sports and more. You're competing against Hasbro, which has a booster box, which contains eight mythic planeswalkers. I mean, you just have a regular booster box for a hundred bucks. Why would anyone want to buy your booster box when there's a seven hundred dollar booster box they can get for two hundred and fifty dollars, which guarantees them the new planeswalkers? Even new players are going to understand this. That hey, if I really want those new planeswalkers, should I buy two boxes and have the chance of not getting them? Or should I just buy this box and guarantee the new Planeswalkers? All right, let me buy this one because I know I'm going to get the new Planeswalkers. I can always sell part of it. 
So uh, essentially, you know, I I think it's interesting. Um, it's definitely interesting from the perspective of a game store, which I have one, because I'm not. I don't want to carry magic boxes. I'm really against carrying magic boxes now because I can't compete. Um, it's not just the price point, but it's how limited these items are. It's difficult for any store to compete on. Um, I mean, no store can guarantee their box is going to have eight mythic planeswalkers, not even the full art or the alternative to art or any of that stuff. If you want to get the new Kala or the new Damri, this is the easiest way to get them that you can play with them in standard. There's no reason for you not to get them like this. So, I mean, my opinion, it's quite fascinating what's happening to our game because this is a direct-to-consumer model, meaning Wizard of the Coast does not need game stores anymore. But the game stores, they pay out of pocket. And I've tried FNMs. I tried one FNM, and it was just not profitable in any aspect. So I stopped doing it. Uh, the same would be for employees, which I'm going to get into a little later. And I'll talk a little bit about Rudy's model. And maybe he's correct that you don't want employees to work for you because you can't take their overhead. And I talked to my friend Steve, who owns uh, a comic store, a Magic the Gathering store. It used to be a very big Magic the Gathering store. And I think he agrees that the overhead is just not worth it. Providing a place to play... I mean, when you compete against this, not going to help you. Bye, guys.